What's going on everybody? It's Ozzy from Oz Talks Hardware and today I have an explanation slash advice video for you guys. And although it's not for a budget product, it's for a product that's pretty important to the PC gaming community as a whole and that is AMD's RX Vega. Now this video is somewhat a response to AMD's financial analyst event day that occurred two, three, four days ago depending on when I'm recording this video. The event was a success according to most people but it left a somewhat sour taste in many gamers mouths because we received very little information on AMD's new enthusiast GPU lineup, Vega. And I'm not talking about the professional Vega Frontier that was unveiled at the event. Now, before I start answering the questions in the title, I do want to premise this by saying that no one should have really expected any non-server grade Vega information at the financial analyst event. It is a financial analyst event, and that means that AMD is going to showcase products that make them the big bucks and keep stockholders happy and satisfied. Consumer enthusiast video cards make up a very small percentage of AMD's total revenue. So most people should have have expected very little to no information on the product, especially with Computex just around the corner, but I will get into that later on in the video. So now I finally pose the question, why is Vega taking so long to develop? If you put things into perspective, NVIDIA released their high-end Pascal graphics cards almost a year ago, and they have already unveiled a video card, granted a non-consumer version, using their next-generation Volta architecture. That means that effectively, Vega, a brand new architecture, will be battling a year-old architecture if it's released before Volta. Old versus new does not matter much if the performance is there, a prime example being AMD using the GCN architecture for three plus generations. But if performance is similar to competition and price is the same, then what is the point in waiting at all? And that's the question that a lot of people have. I believe that there are two reasons, one of them being more speculatory than the other, as to why Vega is taking so long to develop. The first one being the use of new architectures, new technologies, and Polaris' development. Vega, while technically the fifth generation of the GCN architecture, brings a lot of improvements to the table. So much so that AMD denoted Vega's architecture as the acronym NCU instead of GCN. According to Raja himself, Vega brings a new cache architecture and incorporates the new Infinity fabric that was used in their Zen processors. It's very obvious that Vega will be much different than any of the company's past graphics processors, even their latest lineup, Polaris. While AMD did not start from the drawing board like they did with Zen, they definitely took a step back and redesigned crucial areas of GCN because of their two new technologies that they're incorporating the Infinity Fabric and HBM. Now I won't go in depth into either, but for background purposes, HBM is basically an alternative memory to GDDR5 that uses less space and power and utilizes more bandwidth. That's actually why it's named HBM. It stands for High Bandwidth Memory. HBM2 is an iteration of HBM with some technical improvements, which the company confirmed will be used in Vega. On the other hand, we have the Infinity Fabric, a more scalable and flexible version of hypertransport. It allows for better memory and bandwidth performance overall. If you want to read up more on HPM and in the Infinity Fabric, then I will put links in the description and you can check out the articles there. What's important about these two technologies is that they're pretty new to the market. AMD started developing HBM in 2008, but it was not declared an industry standard until 2013. The Infinity Fabric development more than likely began with the development of Zen sometime in the early 2010s, but until the unveiling of the server Vega graphics card, they only successfully incorporated it into their desktop microprocessors. This basically means that they have been effectively incorporating two new technologies into their video card architecture while at the same time tweaking GCN to create Vega, and that's only the hardware side of things. Optimizing the hardware for the software is not an easy task, especially when the hardware is a great shift from the regular norm. Raja himself states that developing drivers for new architecture is one of the most complex and difficult engineering tasks for a GPU company. In fact, this is one of the reasons why there are only so few GPU companies. Just some food for thought. Earlier, I mentioned that Polaris and Vega have many differences, some of which I previously discussed. For example, they do not have the same type of cache, they do not have the same type of memory, and their type of hyper-transport is very different. Because of this, AMD was essentially working on two different architectures at the same time and could only pump out Polaris. They needed to secure the under $300 price segment and effectively accomplish this by limiting the implementation of groundbreaking technology such as HBM and their Infinity Fabric in Polaris. Even after Polaris's release, AMD worked hard on driver updates, completely overhauled the Catalyst Control Center and worked on the implementation of new software such as Wattman, Radeon Chill, and Relive. 
or relive. <laughs> Lots of time, effort, and resources were put into Polaris, and like Raja stated earlier, driver updates and overhauls are no laughing matter. Now, I'm not promising that Polaris hindered Vega's development, only simply suggesting it, but it's very clear that Polaris had priority over Vega. But now let's take a step back for a moment. We all know that AMD released Bulldozer about six years ago, and it was met with negative reviews pretty much all across the board. AMD learned from their mistakes, they cleaned up their mess, and now they're back on track towards competition. But this did not happen without some shifts in management. And that brings me to my last reason why I believe that Vega is, been, is being delayed for so long, and that is because of two things, company growing pains, and they're fighting a losing battle. I'll explain the latter later. In the last three years, AMD has replaced their CEO, lowered their R&D budget to a record 10-year low, laid off 5% of their workforce, and formed a new division dedicated to only graphics development. A lot of this restructuring, combined with their minuscule R&D budget for both processor and GPU development, could attribute to Vega delays. Keep in mind that all new technology, especially high bandwidth memory, is not cheap. Raja states that they're effectively putting a technology that's been limited to super expensive, out-of-reach GPUs into a consumer product. It's not like you can run down to the corner store to get HBM2. It's obvious that AMD had a lot on their plate during Vega's development. So think about this for a second. AMD experiences major managerial shifts and negative responses to Bulldozer, among other things, and they are left in debt. As a result, they cannot procure Vega in a timely manner, and so what they do is that they put most of their time and resources into Polaris, a much cheaper product, and they use the profit from Polaris to fund Vega. Now, I'm not saying that Polaris is the sole reason why Vega is being funded, but there's a good chance that a lot of the profit from its sales definitely helped with its development. Coupled with growing pains, AMD may not have had an architecture that could compete with the GTX 1070 and above, so what they did was completely skip competing with Pascal and moved on to the next generation of video cards. And honestly, this theory is starting to make more and more sense. Allow me to explain. The 1070 and 1080 were unveiled in early May of 2016. At the time, Polaris was developed and only fine adjustments and perhaps driver updates were in development. The 1070 and 1080 boasted GTX 980 Ti and above performance and all AMD had to possibly battle these cards was their Polaris architecture. Remember, Vega was put on a back burner. The issue is that the RX 480, a full Polaris 10 card, could not effectively battle the 1070 even at its fullest potential. And remember that with AMD's limited resources, they could not reply to the 1070 and above with Vega in a timely manner. So what do they do? They give NVIDIA the market and put all their efforts in Polaris while engineers work diligently on Vega. By the holiday season, AMD realizes that Vega is long overdue and thus released their After the Uprising campaign video with the slyly inserted poor Volta message on a poster. At this point, it's pretty clear that they're not planning on releasing Vega to battle Pascal, but rather to battle NVIDIA's next generation of GPUs using the Volta architecture. AMD has accepted the fact that Pascal will rule the high-end segment for the coming months. Instead of trying to fight a losing battle, they are planning ahead and expect to reach the consumer market before NVIDIA does with the Volta. With all of that being said, it's pretty obvious that most people who are using GTX 970 to 980 performance graphics cards have already upgraded to the 1070 or above. But what about those who haven't? Is it worth waiting to upgrade to Vega? Short answer, at this point, yes. The long answer is a little bit more convoluted. I mentioned Computex earlier in this video, and it turns out that the event is scheduled in less than two weeks. AMD has confirmed several times that Vega will be showcased at the event. AMD also confirmed that Vega is on track to be released in the second quarter of 2017, which ends on June 30th. Technically, this could be another professional Vega card, but if history repeats itself, the chances of that seem very slim, and here's why. At Computex two years ago, AMD unveiled the Fury lineup. By the end of June, the cars were available in stores. Last year at Computex, the RX 480 was unveiled and shipped out on June 30th. I suspect that AMD will follow the trend this year as it makes the most sense. Because of this, I think that there's little reason to not wait until Computex to make a decision to upgrade. My advice basically boils down to this. If we get little to no information about Vega at Computex or we do not get a confirmed release date, then upgrade to Pascal. It's clear that Vega's details have not been finalized at that point and it's just gonna be a waiting game. 
But if we do get a release date and a lot of information on Vega, and I'm almost positive that we will, then you can kind of make that decision as to if you're gonna wait until its actual release date. Now that kind of depends on you, um, how badly you need to upgrade and how long you've been waiting. Um, everybody's answer is gonna be a little bit different, so I can't help you much there. But if we don't get a time slot or a release date, then Pascal it is. In conclusion, AMD's Vega is long overdue. Now I could get into information about how I think it will perform, what uh, the pricing would be, but I think that's a little bit too speculatory, especially with Computex just around the corner. So I'll actually, actually, I'll give that to you guys. How do you think Vega will perform and what do you think its price will be? Are you guys going to be upgrading to Vega or have you already bit the bullet? Let me know in the comments below. So that's it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed it, then leave a like. And if you loved it, subscribe because I have more videos like this in the future. By the way, I do have a community Discord server and you're welcome to join. Link will be in the description. Pretty much anybody and anybody can join and we talk about whatever. And I also will be starting Discord exclusive giveaways. So there's a little incentive there for you. But that's it for this video. And I hope you guys enjoyed. Until next time, I'll see you guys later.